All I see is blessings, got no time for stressing. Don't believe in failures in my life, it's only lessons. They just make the room for what I'm on now. I don't got a clue, but I know the one who does know how. Oh, wow. It's like I'm learning the game with the maker I already know now. Destiny has my name, no, it's coming, it'll never go. I know that we all gonna be alright. We gon' make it through if it takes us all night No matter what the odds may bring our way I can see the blessings coming our way, yeah, yeah, yeah Blessings on blessings, yeah I can see the blessings coming our way, our way, our way Blessings on blessings, yeah I can see the blessings coming our way I can't say the life's been perfect Or complain cause life's been worth it No matter what the odds may bring our way, I can see the blessings coming our way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blessings on blessings, yeah. I can see the blessings coming our way, our way, our way. Blessings on blessings, yeah. I can see the blessings coming our way. I can see the blessings. I can feel your presence. Leaning on the change in my heart for your endeavors. I pray I'm your reflection. I fiend for your correction. The cross brought the connection and through Jesus is perfection. Life done hit me crazy, been more stressed than ever. Living like whatever. Through the rain I feel you drawing closer. Lord make me better. I take me, shape me, use me. I am yours. Take me, break me for the glory of the Lord. Okay, not only does he hold me when I'm down and feel I'm folding, he my Coach when I'm the goalie, never lonely, got that hope in he who holy, 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 keep that rugged cross all on me, need that spirit to control me, seek that word. If I wasn't this that I am right now, um, comedian would probably be the, the thing that would appeal to me the most. But if you're in this room, and you're a dude, and you're saying, I feel like Pastor Andy is trying to pressure me into getting somebody. You got it exactly right. It is a double standard. You, you hit the nail exactly on the head. You got it. Hopefully, at some point down the line, your behind will get saved. That's what I did with you. That's why this is a Baptist church. That's why Dimitri works for me. That's why Heath and Jarrell works for me. Because that's why Bruce is still on staff. Because this is a Baptist church. Oh my God. It's amazing how brave people can be when they're in their car. And as he stepped on the gas to speed off, I guess to show us that he's mad, his car started spinning, and he almost went in the ditch. I was praying for him to go in the ditch, actually. I was like, get him, God, get him. That person had gone to another place. Um, and so now that... And it makes you marvel at the wonders of makeup, and it makes you scared. Because it's incredible how somebody can start off mm. and when they're done you're like hey yeah, I'm amazed at the at, at guys that get women I'm like oh my god you're broke a drive-through is a faith experience I don't know if you've ever looked in there I don't even look I just say Jesus keep me to hear the God. I'm just are my fries done yet because if you look in there there's a mad scramble and and weave is flowing around eh? I don't know if two ballers work she look pretty cool what up girl but she don't make no money she don't pay no tithes I showed that Cardi B video to my wife by the way she said, poor men. I said, I know. But can you do this dance? No, I'm just kidding. They told you. Your mama told you. You went to the party anyway. You went to the club. You knew. 
you ever stay at a hotel? Ooh, faith. You don't know what they was doing on that comforter the night before. You don't know who put their their naked butt cheeks all on the and you just coming in just like ah, just lay out. Of. And we hide. Why did we hide? Same reason Adam hided. The same reason Adam hid. Hide it. Help us. Same reason Adam hid. Oh God. I'm saying it. Let me say it more clearly. It's not about. My favorite show, My 600 Pound Life. Half them women have a man, and even the women themselves, sitting there, 720, saying, I deserve love in my life. There's a part of me that's like, you do? This is sugar. This is what I pour on the table. This is what I chop up and line up. I don't want to make lines too well because I don't want you to be like, what was Pastor Andy doing on his sabbatical? But this, this is, this is what I want to, this is my drug. What this girl is going to do to me tonight? I can barely look at her with a mic in her hand. Anyway, what I'm saying, sorry. What I'm saying. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't know why that is so funny. It's time to fly your way. While I'm slipping like an absent dog. Roll a play, skip and skid in along the top of Noah's Ark.
sure to follow Pastor Andy on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook to be up to date on all his sermons, Motivational Mondays, podcast announcements. Be sure to follow our World Overcomers page to know all our major events and retail shops. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube where we upload new messages from Pastor Andy every week. If you're ever in the Raleigh-Durham area, be sure to visit us at 2933 South Miami Boulevard. Andy on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook to be up to date on all his sermons, Motivational Mondays, podcast announcements. Be sure to follow our World Overcomers page to know all our major events and retail shops. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube where we upload new messages from Pastor Andy every week. If you're ever in the Raleigh-Durham area, be sure to visit us at 2933 South Miami Boulevard.
if I wasn't this that I am right now, um, comedian would probably be the, the thing that would appeal to me the most. But if you're in this room and you're a dude and you're saying, I feel like Pastor Andy is trying to pressure me into getting somebody, you got it exactly right. It is a double standard. You, you hit the nail exactly on the head. You got it. Hopefully at some point down the line, your behind will get saved. That's what I did with you. That's why this is a Baptist church. That's why Dimitri works for me. That's why Heath and Jarrell works for me. Because that's why Bruce is still on staff. Because this is a Baptist church. Oh my God. It's amazing how brave people can be when they're in their car. And as he stepped on the gas to speed off, I guess to show us that he's mad, his car started spinning, and he almost went in the ditch. I was praying for him to go in the ditch, actually. I was like, get him, God, get him. That person had gone to another place. Um, and so now that... And it makes you marvel at the wonders of makeup, and it makes you scared. Because it's incredible how somebody can start off mm. and when they're done you're like hey yeah, I'm amazed at the at, at guys that get women I'm like oh my god you're broke a drive through is a faith experience I don't know if you've ever looked in there I don't even look I just say Jesus keep me to hear the I'm just are my fries done yet because if you look in there there's a mad scramble and and weave is flowing around eh? I don't know if two ballers work she look pretty cool what up girl but she don't make no money she don't pay no tithes I showed that Cardi B video to my wife by the way she said, poor men. I said, I know. But can you do this dance? No, I'm just kidding. They told you, your mama told you. You went to the party anyway. You went to the club, you knew. You ever stay at a hotel? Ooh, faith. You don't know what they was doing on that comforter the night before. You don't know who put their, their naked butt cheeks all on the, and you just coming in and just like, ah, just lay out. <laughs> and we hide, why do we hide? Same reason Adam hided. The re same reason Adam hid. Hide it, help us. Same reason Adam hid. Oh, God. I'm saying it. Let me say it more clearly. It's not about all. You know, my favorite show, Live 600 Pound Life. Half them women have a man. And even the women themselves. Good morning, World Overcomers. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning to those of you who are watching online. Thank you so much for being with us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Are y'all glad to be alive today? Has the Lord been faithful and good to you? Look, we're starting our service a little bit differently today. Today is the day that we have chosen to celebrate our visionary leader. Yes, that's right, isn't it? online put the hand clap emojis we are celebrating our senior pastor today he's done so much for so many and we're thankful we love you pastor thank you thank you thank you while you're standing let's pray father you're wonderful and we love you we first say thank you for everything that you've done for us you've kept us all night long God, you've allowed us to come to your house safely. And those who are watching via online, thank you, God, for connecting them to World Overcomers Christian Church. Now, Spirit of the living God, as we're here today to celebrate our visionary leader, God, let somebody be healed today. Let somebody be saved today. Let somebody be made free today. We thank you for it, and we declare it done. In Jesus' name, we all say together, amen. You can take your seats and give your attention to the screen. Words like husband, father, mentor, teacher, priest, and friend only begins to describe the measure of man that you are.
Your message is impeccable. Your influence, immeasurable. Those impacted by your ministry, innumerable. So on this, your 55th birthday, sir, we pause to celebrate, honor, and acknowledge you as the visionary leader that you are to us personally and the body of Christ globally. It is my privilege to join in to say happy birthday to the best big brother on the planet, Pastor Andy. I call him my day one. I have laughed with you. I've learned from you. I have simply enjoyed being your little sister. Happy, 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 happy birthday. I love you. Happy birthday to my big bro. Love you, man. Happy birthday. I pray that 55, double five, that God would do double. God would do exceeding and abundantly supernatural grace to be afforded to you. Blessing, favor, miracles, increase will be your portion. I love you, bro. Listen, dude, you're the best. That's it. You're the best. I just wanted to tell you how much I love you, and I hope you have a happy, happy birthday. Andy, um, my brother, and, you know, more importantly to me, one of my best friends, uh, my prayer for you is that this will be your very best year. So, bro, happy birthday. I love you. Hey, bro. Love you. Happy birthday. Uh, happy 55th birthday. Um, you know, you're 10 years older than me, um, but it's, uh, it's, it's an honor and, and it's a privilege to be part of the staff here and to celebrate you on this, on, on this day and um, on year 55. I love you, man. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Pastor Andy. I love you, bro. But uh, I, I'm so glad that, you know, we get to celebrate you here. Uh, I wish I could be there with y'all, but happy birthday, Andy. Love you to death, bro. Happy birthday, Andy, my big brother. I love you so much. You're an amazing big brother. Um, I just love you so much. Even now, I love our, our hours and hours long conversations that we have. Um, I just always feel loved by you. And I just pray this is an amazing year for you, 55. Happy birthday, I love you so much. Happy birthday. You know I'm not going to sing to you. You all, all of you can sing. Man, I had to come and say happy 55th birthday. You're a great man of God. Phenomenal pastor, visionary, and 55, that's a good age. Because life is, it's really a blessing with you in it. I can't wait to see what you do for God. Happy birthday, man. We love you here at Cornelia. It's your birthday. You have now turned five, five. 55, what they call you. And I'm excited about what God is doing for you and what he's going to do for you. Happy 55th birthday. Hey, bruh, you look good for our age, so let's keep it up. Happy birthday, man. Love you and the family. Let's go. Happy birthday, Pastor Andy. It's been over a decade since I walked in the world of overcomers, and God used you to save my life and my soul. And for this, I'm eternally grateful. I'm so grateful for the man of God that you are. Be blessed, my friend. Pastor Andy Thompson, I hear that you're having a birthday. Young man, you're turning 55. God bless you. Thank God for you. I pray that your year is great, that your people treat you real good, honor you as you now have another milestone in your life. This is get better from here. We wish you a very happy birthday. Pastor Andy Thompson. Pop, dad, what's up? Happy birthday. I love my dad. And uh, man, the church is blessed to have you. And uh, every time I go to a church and people know you or reference you, I am proud for you to be my spiritual father. Happy, happy, happy birthday. We celebrate you. We honor you. There is truly nobody like you. And uh, I can't wait to see you. I love you, Pop. Happy birthday. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. What's going on, VA? Happy birthday to you, sir. It's Brian and Karen, and we are excited to celebrate this day with yes. you. 
Thank you for all that you have meant to our marriage, to our ministry, to our lives. So we honor you this day. We appreciate you. I definitely know Manny Arango thinks he's the favorite. But truthfully, the favorite, you know what I'm saying? It's really me. It's me. <laughs> We your favorite. Just go ahead and admit it. Yeah, just tell the world. It, Happy it was us. All right. Happy we birthday. Love we love you. We honor you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Hey, what's up, Pastor Andy? Pastor George here. Listen, as I was thinking about what I would say in honor of you and in celebration of you, I want you to know that up here in Columbus, Ohio, there are hundreds and thousands of kids that have been impacted and touched as a result of the seeds that you have sown in the year. And so if you ever get discouraged, if you ever feel down, uh, just think about your group. Just think about the thousands of young men and young women around this country that are being touched by your ministry. I love you, sir. Forever will. Um, hope, hope that I'll be able to see you. God bless you. We bring you greetings all the way from Long Island, New York, right here in Dix Hills. And we just want to stop by and on a very, very special day, day of double nickels, we want to wish Pastor Andy a happy birthday. Uh, Jacqueline is here, your favorite white girl. She wants to wish you a uh, happy birthday as well. Happy birthday, Pastor Andy. We love you so much. We pray abundant blessings. Continue to pour over your life for all that you do. We love you so much. Have a great day. Guys, can we say happy birthday to Andy? One, two, yeah. three. Happy birthday, Pastor Andy. God bless you. We love you. Pastor Andy Thompson, happy birthday, sir. Wanted to jump on and just wish you an amazing, incredible birthday. I'm sure everybody at World Overcomers and abroad are taking very good care of you. You deserve it. You're a man of God, and I just appreciate everything that you've added to my life. Um, I'm sure I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for my time leading worship at the amazing World Overcomers with a bunch of people who are probably watching this video right now, I hope. But happy birthday, my friend. Wish I could be there. I would have been there, but I just can't. So hopefully we'll see you soon. Happy birthday, sir. Hey, Pastor Andy. Man, I'm so excited to get to celebrate you. You have been a trailblazer for the kingdom of God for a very, very, very long time. And what I want you to know that for me, I'm so grateful for you. Happy birthday. We love you, sir. Pastor Andy, happy birthday to you, man. Congratulations. Man, much of my success uh, with Hungry Church was largely based upon everything that I learned from you and just took from you as it relates to how you did it. Your sauce was undeniable. Your recipe for success, undeniable. And I appreciate you so much. I've learned so much from you. And if I'm honest, more times than not, you are always right. Happy birthday, Pastor Ed. That's my dog. Man, where would I be if it wasn't for Andy Thompson? Jesus. Listen, man, I love you, bro. Everything in my life that is good is a direct reflection of you. I appreciate you. I appreciate your life. I appreciate all you do, man. I would not be who I am today if it wasn't for Andy Thompson. I love you, brother. Happy birthday to you, man. I hope they celebrate you right. I hope they do it right. So, love you, man. Happy birthday. Be blessed. Happy, Happy birthday, 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 Pastor Andy. Andy. Hey, brother, man. We're just wishing we could be with you guys to celebrate your 55th birthday. But we wanted to take a few moments just to let you know how much we love you, man. Also love your humor. I love the fact that um, you don't seem to have a filter. And um, <laughs> that's funny to me. Um, it's refreshing, and I love kind of trying to push you to the edge. But on this celebration, man, we wanted to pause and let you know that we love you. We're thinking about you. We hope that they're celebrating you in the proper way that you deserve to be celebrated. Happy birthday. Yeah, man. And you're looking good, too, man. I want to be like you when I grow up. Love you. Have a great birthday. Can't wait to see you soon. Peace. Pastor Andy Thompson, this is your friend, your little sister, Marissa Farrell, and I am so excited to have this moment to wish you a very, very happy birthday. I pray that this week has absolutely blown your mind because you, my friend, are one of one. There is nobody like you in all the earth. Thank you so much for being who you are. Happy birthday, and we love you. 
Pastor Andy. It is my extreme pleasure to wish you a happy birthday and say hello to your beautiful wife. I remember when you first got to Durham not so very long ago and how we initially met and connected then with you coming to the courthouse to visit me and from then on you have supported me throughout my political career since you've gotten here. We, and not only have you supported me, you have been so good to Durham and to all of your membership and the community at large. We love you, we wish you a happy, happy birthday, and always remember, we are Dual City Strong. Good morning, World Overcomers, and happy birthday, happy 55th birthday to my friend and brother, Pastor Andy Thompson. Keep on hearing from God, Keep on breaking barriers. Keep on leading. I love you. Happy 55th birthday. Hey, Andy, what's going on, brother? Man, and I mean brother in every sense of the word. They told me it's your birthday. Man, you are an amazing leader. When I got a chance to come to your church, I felt like I truly overcame. Man, you built an amazing work. And God is not done with you yet. I pray that he continues to give you ingenuity, ideas, ministry ideas. I pray that it continues to anoint your head with oil. Man, just keep on being you. You are an amazing individual. And I'm so proud to call you brother. I love you, man. I'll see you soon. Happy birthday. Man, happy birthday to you. Man, it's time to celebrate. Let's turn up, man. I'm looking forward to celebrating with you. We send in a seed. Word of God fellowship. We love you, man. We love you, Pastor Andy Thompson. I can't wait to celebrate with you, man. Keep on rising. I see you at the top. God bless you. Happy birthday. Hi, Dad. Happy birthday. I'm so, so excited that we are taking this time to honor you and to make a big deal about you because you are a big deal. And I know you don't love these kind of things all the time, <laughs> but you deserve it. You deserve to be honored. You deserve to um, hear all of the things that make you so amazing and hear why people love you and to smell your flowers while, while you're still here, if I said that correctly, <laughs> to smell your flowers while you're still here, while you're still around. I love you very much. Let me not make this too long, um, but I hope you really, truly just take all this in today and you know how much you are loved and appreciated and yeah, how much you just think so well of you. Yeah, happy birthday. Hey dad, it's your son, your favorite son. Um, just wanna let you know how much of a great leader you've been. Um, I always just bestowing wisdom in times where I really need to hear it. And um, just being lighthearted and humorous in the tough times in my life. You've just you've been successful when it comes to your business and I admire you so much for that. I love you and I thank you. And I can hope we continue to grow in our relationship and do some business together. I love you. What's up, y'all? It's Big Rob. You know me, man. The number one favorite son, you know? I don't know where I would be without your wisdom, man, because whoo, was I crazy. But to God be the glory. Um, and he has nurtured all of us and you have nurtured all of us to be to for me to be a man of God um, and I can't thank you enough dad um, I love you from the bottom of my heart um, I wouldn't want to be anybody else's son man um, and I know you don't really like surprises I know you're not really a big party person but dad you got to turn up man you got to turn up for all of us turn up for me because you deserve this man you deserve this wholeheartedly and like I said I love you I love you I love you Peace. Hey, Dad, it's me, Win Win McGillicuddy. That's right, I'm here for your birthday. I'll make this brief, you know. Dad, you're giving me the world. You're my first fan, you know. You were my, you give me to be my first fan ever of my cartoons. You've um, encouraged me to keep on creating and keep on um, being inspired by the world and stuff and everything in it, you know, and, um, I want to say happy birthday to you. I'm 55 years old and 
that's awesome man we, we made it we made it oh sorry we made it so yeah and um so yeah i, I don't want i don't know what else to really say i mean i don't think there's any words i really could describe how great you are you know but um i will say this i'm really sorry about this right here i'm sorry I don't know why I made your gut so big, so I'll just, I'll just that's this is for you. This is for you. Jeremiah 315, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Thank you, Pastor Andy, for your commitment, innovation, and your consistency. Please rise to your feet and join us in giving God praise for our visionary leader, Pastor Andy Thompson. Now can you stand on your feet and shout unto God with the voice of triumph? Come on, can you clap your hands like this? Yes, sir. Come on, can we take you back real quick? Everybody clap your hands like this. Yes, sir. Scripture says I will bless the Lord at all.
Come on, can we shout hallelujah to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Who is this King of Glory? The Lord God strong and mighty. The Lord God mighty in battle. Clap those hands. I need somebody to clap those hands for the King and the Lord of Lords. Come on, clap. It's a real simple song. Let's go. Say King of Kings. King of Kings. You know I love Lord. Clap your hands right here. 
believe he's the king of kings you reign forever. and the lord of lords you, you want to open up your mouth and give the king some praise in the world. i said give the king of kings some praise in the world. if he rules in your life if he's got control of your life you oh. ought to give him glory he shall reign forever shot all over the room. Let's just declare this. See, I do, I do worship. worship. All of my heart, I do, I do worship. worship. You get the glory. I do worship you.
got mine in battle. Come on, for a few more seconds. Can you lift up your worship to the King of Kings? Thanksgiving on them. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Where would we be without you? We thank you. We thank you. We give you glory, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Thank you, Lord, for being there. Like I was going
kept healing me. You've been better to me than I can have. So many doors you open. So many doors you open. So many ways you keep on making for me. So many times that my heart was heavy, but you healed me. You've been better, 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 better. You've been better to say so. While your hands are lifted, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy. God, we came this morning to say thank you for every door you've opened. We come to say thank you for every way that you've made. We thank you for every promise that you've made come to pass. Thank you, God, for holding back the hand of the enemy and allowing us to come in with victory this morning. Now, God, we're here in this room just to say thank you. God, those that are online joining us, we say thank you. We say thank you for healing in bodies right now. We say thank you for healing in minds right now. We say thank you for mending of hearts right now. God, we come to say thank you with understanding that only you can do, only you can do. God, we thank you now for an exceeding and abundant blessing right now. God, we thank you for flipping the script. Thank you for turning things around. Thank you for making ways. Thank you for saving our children. Thank you for healing our bodies. God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, God, so much. We appreciate you. We let's say the Lord's Prayer together here. Woo! Hey. Woo. Say you've been so good. Say you've been hey. so good. So good. Let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's clap our hands and tell God thank you. If you know he's been good. If you know he's been good, come on, you just got finished singing it. It's okay to clap your hand and open up your mouth and tell God thank you for his goodness. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for his faithfulness. Thank him for him being good, even when we weren't good. Thank you, Lord, that you've been so good to us. You've been good. You've been good. Come on, one more time, we're clapping our hands. And we're telling the Lord, thank you. Yep. 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 He's been just that good. That's why we give him glory. That's why we give him honor. That's why we praise him because he's been just that good. He really has, Pastor. He really has. He really has. He really has. Really, really has. You've been good. You really have. You've been good. So been good. That. So good. All right. All right, y'all. I know you've been. Oh. I've seen it with my own. Just that good, just that good, just that good. You 
may be seated in the presence of the Lord. He's been just that good. He's been just that good. He's been just that good. All right. I'll give you 30 more seconds. If you want to take it, take it. If you want to scream, scream. I'll give you 30 more. 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. All right. Did you get it out? 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 All right. Good. 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 All right, y'all. Come on. Let's be seated in the presence of the Lord. God has been so good to us. We'd like to welcome you name by name and person by person. So World Over Compass Christian Church, where we believe that there's balanced victory for this God-designed life. God-designed victory for this God-designed life. We like... We, my boss is here, y'all. Y'all can't be doing this. Y'all got to chill out. Y'all got to chill out. So on behalf of our senior pastor and our first lady, Pastor Andy Thompson, we'd like to welcome all of you, name by name and person by person, to World Overcomers Christian Church. We know and we believe that there's balanced victory for the God-designed love. We're so glad that you're here. Let's thank God our senior pastor is here, and we're here to celebrate his birthday today, our visionary leader. We're so thankful for you. Bishop Gobby's in the room who has come to celebrate with us. Thank you, First Lady, his family, the First Family. Thank you all to the visiting pastors that are here. We're glad that you're here. Look, um, I'm Pastor Tyrus Hinton, your associate pastor here at World Overcomers Christian Church, and it's my great, great honor and pleasure to welcome you to where we believe that the table is spread and the Feast of the Lord is going on. All of you who are visiting with us for the first time, would you wave your hand? Can I see who you are? We just want to greet you. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Hey, how you doing? All right, bro. I see you in the corner. Good to see you, man. Who am I missing over here? Wave your hand. Good to see you. Good to see you, sis. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, man. We're glad to see you. We, got, we are so glad that you're here. If you are um, in one of the rows, there should be a QR code on the seat in front of you. You can scan that QR code and connect with us there. We'd love to stay connected with you. We'd love to let you know all of the great things that are going on here at World Overcomers Christian Church. Uh, you should have received a card with the QR code on it as well to our bulletin so that you can stay in the loop and stay connected with us. Our money series is coming up beginning next Sunday. Woo! How, y how many of y'all excited about money? Yeah, I know, I know. For years we've been taught, oh, you don't get excited about money. No, you get excited about money. My God is big. He's great. And he, according to his word, he'd supply all of our need according to his riches in glory. So that's all right. Flex a little bit. Money's coming to our house now. Huh? Can I say that again? Money's coming to our house now. Let me say it again. Money's coming to our house now. Let's say it again. Money's coming to our house now. Now, all right, we're going to hold on to that. Our pastor's going to be preaching on Mo Money for the whole month of October. And you want to stay connected so that you can be a part. Let's give to the work of the kingdom now. God has blessed us so much. What shall I render unto God for all of his benefits? God does so much for us. If you need an envelope, you can wave your hand. You can wave your hand right now. One of these faithful gentlemen in blue will serve you. That is our offering envelope. Many of you have come in today and you said, you know what? It's Pastor's birthday and I wanted to be a blessing to him. You don't even have to worry about a card. We got a card for you. All you have to do is sign it and put your money in it. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Balance victory. All right. So if you need an envelope for offering, you have an envelope there because we are tithers over here. Is that right? We tithe with no problem, no hesitation. We tithe. And we also sow into our man of God. So I want to encourage you to do that today. Those of you who need an envelope, raise your hand. You can scan the QR code. Those of you who are online, you can give by just click, click, clicking that link in the uh, chat there, and you'll be able to give that way. 
um, those of you who are on push pay. All right, let's pray now. God, we thank you. You give seed to the sower, and we thank you. God, we've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed beg for bread. And God, we're not begging today, but we're saying thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and what's on the way. Thank you for witty inventions. Thank you for business ideas. Thank you for increasing our homes and our businesses. Thank you for blessing our basket and our store. Thank you for ensuring that we have more than enough. We praise you and we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, we all say together, amen. As the bucket pass you, remain seated. We have another tribute for our senior pastor, after which the worship team will come. About this, uh, this series that I'm going to do in October, it's called Mo Money, 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 Money. Well, I, I, I think that we think about money answering all things, something that we are definitely aware of. October to me is harvest time. I want everybody to be blessed and it's going to be powerful. It's not going to just me be preaching. It's going to be me having conversations with individuals about ways in which we can be effective financially in which you can grow financially, because I pray above all things that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So just as how you are being blessed and powered spiritually, I have an expectation that God bless you financially and that you know how it works. So that's what's gonna happen in October. And uh, I can't wait to be a part of it. I hope you're looking forward to it. Get all excited, go tell everybody, let people know. We're going to be talking about money, how to grow your money, how to make more money, what you should be doing with your money, investing money, being smart with your money. It's World Overcomers. It's more money. It's going to be great. Don't miss it. Bring somebody. Don't miss it. Happy birthday, Happy Pastor birthday, Andy. Happy birthday, Pastor Andy. <laughs> Man of God. Listen, 55 years. Our firstborn is 55. I can't Lord, believe mercy. it. 55 years ago. Where did all of the time go? I know, I know, I know. Uh, what a wonderful firstborn you are. Yes, indeed. And yes, um, indeed. we're so proud of, even as when you were when you were young, you know, you took that older brother uh, responsibility very seriously. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. we can always depend on you setting the example, boy. <laughs> we, yes. And we, of course, yes. we made all our mistakes because with you because you were the first. And uh, of course, you you tell the story of how, you know, he is the, the best, and then we try to duplicate the original. He's the original, but Andre, we love you so much. Just wanted to say happy birthday, and I just want to clear up the the you know whenever the kids get together and at my birthday party, you know, there's always a competition about something, and so they had this competition about who's the best big brother. Uh, Andy being the best big brother of Teresa or Michael being the best big brother of Debbie and I had to be the judge so at the party of course I'm like oh well, you're both such blessed big brothers you know mm -hmm. but I just want to tell you son you won that argument don't tell your siblings but you are the one <laughs> who is the best big brother of course, all time of course okay? they will be looking at this video oh who cares but anyway <laughs> we just we just want to say we love you so much we appreciate you son and the work that god is doing through you is phenomenal yeah. and uh you need to hear us say yeah. how much we love you and how much we appreciate all that you are doing yes. for the work of the kingdom. Yes. You so are proud. a man of God, a yes. man of distinction, a man of character. Yes. And you can look at uh, what you are doing, e even your family, yes. and see God's hand is on you. Yes. Love you much. We love you so much. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Praise the Lord. I believe after 55 years of living, Pastor Andy can testify that the Lord's word is true, that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Is it all right if we remind you of that today? The Lord is true. He has proven that he keeps his promises. So whatever you're in this morning, I believe the Lord is working it out for you. It's working for your good. This heavy load was never
never mine to bear So I cast my cares upon you, Lord This weary road I've traveled for so long Would you take my hand and lead me on You are working all things for my good You are working all things for my good When I cannot see it God, I still believe it You are working all things for my good Do you believe it this morning? Oh, you are, you are When troubles come
less known to our neighbor early. Just tell your neighbor, excuse me if I'm selfish for a moment. But he's working something out for me right now. I don't have to wait to get home. I don't have to wait to open the email. I don't even have to wait to get to the mailbox. But I can praise him in advance. Just find three people and tell them he's working it out for you. And if your faith can receive that, I need you to lift up a sound of praise in this house. No, I need some faith people to lift up a sound of faith in this house. Now just tell somebody else, it's already worked out. You don't need a cheerleader when you understand it's already worked out. You don't need nobody to pump and prod you to know that it's already worked out. Tell somebody whatever you came in and deal it with, it's already worked out. Wow. Man, you may be seated in the presence of God. Wow. Y'all have to excuse me. I had to be selfish for a moment. I needed that. Amen. I got some things that I need God to work out. I said I got some things that I need God to work out. Amen. So thank you for that. Man, what an honor and what a privilege it is to be in this place. I was uh, just laughing with the Armor Bearer team and I told them I just feel like I'm an honorary member of World Overcomers. I'm going to need a, a shirt and a tracksuit. Amen. Because uh, this just feels like home. Uh, let me just begin by saying what a privilege and what an honor it is for me to stand on this platform. Uh, somebody texted me early this morning. Evidently, they saw that I would be here. And they texted me and said, man, I didn't know that you and Pastor Andy were boys. I said, correction, we're not. He's my mentor. And one thing that I've discovered is that you never make a mentor a friend. You always keep their voice in a space of respect and honor. And I would never reduce him to my level because honor can never be exchanged on the same level. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm grateful for his wisdom and I'm grateful for what we share. I'm better because he is. As I look at the works that his hand has wrought, I stand in profound amazement as to what God has done through him. From the time I stepped foot on the ground of Durham, I made it my business to get to know this mighty man of God. There were many days that he was the focal point in my prayers, that God would just allow our paths to cross, and that I would in some way end up in his company that I would be able to draw from as well. I am amazed that I get to stand in this place today. We are uh, somewhat in our new facility and um, the last thing I need to do is to be away from it. I was traveling last week and been traveling all week and the only way that I would be any place other than the river this morning is to be here with this mighty man of God. What a privilege you have to call him your pastor and to think that God has entrusted your life into his care. You should all be profoundly aware of what God thinks about you because he has planted you in a place called World Overcomers. And so I just uh, would like for him to probably go to his office right now because uh, I've never preached in front of him before. <laughs> I think it would be a little rude to ask him to move on his birthday, but uh, so I, I'll just suffer uh, the little bit of embarrassment that I can. He is one of the greatest orators that our day has known, one of the greatest leaders that the body of Christ has known. And the reason that I'm able to stand in this moment is for my honor and admiration for him. Uh, young preachers, you need to take a page from this book very powerful principle that was placed before us when Jesus took the disciples into the storm. 
It is before the practicum that he gives them the principle and then he invites them with a divine and sovereign invitation into a very devastating storm. They awaken him and they say, carest thou not that we perish? We preach and we teach that he steps to the helm of the ship and he rebukes the wind. We speak that from a English perspective, but it's really not understood that proper way. You have to understand it from the original language, and the original language is not that he rebukes the wind, not that he speaks to it harshly or violently, but the word there is epitomeo in the original Greek, and the word epitomeo means to honor, because it is when you honor up that you can control what's under. The whole text is about seed time, harvest time principles. And so he taught them before going in how to plant into what you want to receive because you can never receive from what you don't respect. If you don't respect the wind, you can't control the waves. And so God has invited us into this moment so that we can control our storms. It's in moments like this that it's not just his opportunity, but it's ours as well. And so God has invited us into this moment to plant honor so that we can receive power, so that we can stop some of the storms that are going on in our lives. And the good news is that when we leave this moment, we will leave in complete control of our storms. We will never again have to wake a sleeping Jesus, but we will allow him to be at rest on the throne because truly he is a God that is at rest on a throne. The problem is that we are a church that keeps waking up arresting Jesus. When he has equipped us and empowered us with the principle, it is our responsibility in the midst of the storm to operate the principle in the midst of the practicum. And it's then and only then that we can leave him at rest on the throne. Tell your neighbor, stop waking Jesus up. Yeah. So as we enter into this moment again, I want to revisit uh, teaching that I began when I was here. And the reason that I'm doing this, please uh, respect the approach to the text. It may in some ways sound like, man, he preached this the last time that he was here. But I'm trying to challenge myself to measure myself so that I can maintain the maturity that God has entrusted in my care with the preaching that he has allowed me to have access to. As he continues to grant me opportunities to stand on some of the greatest platforms across the globe, this being one of them, I'm trying to measure myself, lest these moments take me into a place that is beyond where God wants me to go. And so as I drill down today, I want to invite your attention again to a very familiar passage of scripture found in Genesis 41 and 51. Again, we honor the Thompson family to all of his amazing family. We are honored that you would allow us to stand in this moment to speak into your lives and into the life of God's people. If it is customary for you to stand for the reading of the word, please feel free to do so. If it's not, you can remain seated. As we continue to honor not only the man of God, but as we continue to honor the word of God that, again, he continuously plants into our lives weekly. He is one of the hands that God has called to shape men across this globe for what he invests and imparts into men. It is just one of the plethora of reasons that the world overcomers is what it is. As we seek to develop an acumen that is in somewhat equal to what he has displayed, uh, I pray that from this preaching moment that you would simply allow me to be me. I am in no way equal to the teaching level of your pastor, but I'm just a good old Baptist preacher. Amen. And before the day is out, you're going to discover that that's all I am. Amen. Uh, Genesis 41 and 51, and Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God said, he hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. 
And the name of the second called Ephraim. For God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. God has already blessed and will continuously bless the reading and the hearing of his word for the edification of our soul. I told you I was Baptist to the core. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. For these few moments that we share, I just simply want to talk about the cost. The cost. There are people that will see you bouncing your baby on your knee. And they will mismanage the moment severely, believing that this celebratory moment is because you have done something meritorious of that moment. They will never be mindful of what it has taken for you to produce what it is you have produced. They will look at this beautiful bouncing baby that you are caring for on your knee. And they will factor in the price, but they will never really understand the cost. The problem with modern ministry is we have people who come and gather and assemble in the works that our sacrifice has provided. And they can sit and they can add up the screens. They can add up the LED walls. They can add up the instruments. And they will walk from these moments believing that they can in some way mimic the mastery of the one who has produced the Manessa. They will immediately, because they are inspired from the uh, works that our hands have produced, they will walk from those moments believing that it is as simple as purchasing screens and buying instruments and building platforms and putting their names on buildings. And they believe that that is the recipe for Manessa. But the problem is that they will leave inspired only to discover that it is not the inspiration that created the Manessa. You can add up the price, but you'll never understand the cost. There are so many people who have looked at the magnitude of this man called Pastor Andy Thompson, and they have looked at the Manessa that is called World Overcomers Church, and they are immediately inspired to believe that they too can have a Manessa. They know the price, they just don't understand the cost. Some of you right now, you can testify that there are people in your sphere of influence that they look at the price of your life and they believe that they could be you. As a matter of fact, some of them have to move to other environments because in order to duplicate you in the environment that they're in, they would be immediately recognized. So they have to make you feel as if you are the one who is inferior so that they can get away from you and go somewhere else and be you. Have you ever experienced that before where somebody had to make you the problem so that they could have an, a reason or an excuse to exit your life so that they could go somewhere else and duplicate your behaviors, duplicate your drip, dip, duplicate your doing? Because immediately it would be recognized in your intimate circles of influence. But you don't know the cost. And that's the problem again with the modern generation is they believe that these things are done by duplication and you can simply just do lazy leadership and simply mimic the mind of others. And so we gather at conferences to hear how others did it. But can I tell you, just because you can hear how I did it doesn't mean that you're qualified to do the same. Just tell somebody it ain't easy being me. Come on, talk to the other neighbor. Tell them it ain't easy being me. Before you add up what I got on today, before you look at the price of the red bottoms, please understand that the cost far exceeds the price. Just tell somebody the cost far exceeds the price. Don't you ever think that you can measure me by the price tag and the labels that I live under? It is so much more to me than the thing that you see. Just bother somebody else and tell them there's so much more to me than that. Before you reduce me to the limitations of your logic, please understand the places that I've been developed in, the things that I've endured, the stuff that I had to go through. As a matter of fact, just to make it here today, 
If, if you knew what just this morning cost me, if you knew what every praise cost me, if you knew what every lifting of my hand cost me, you wouldn't dare sit there and say, I'm doing too much. <laughs> extreme always seem, or, 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 or extreme will always seem extra to ordinary people. <laughs> Just tell your neighbor, I'm not ordinary by no stretch of the imagination. And thank God that this place called World Overcomers exists because it attracts extraordinary people. People who are uniquely qualified and earmarked by extinguishing a thing called survival. Uh, if you only knew the stuff that I've been through. That's what I always tell people. Before you assess where I am, please understand what it took for me to get where I am. Just because I don't look like what I've been through. Just because I'm beautiful and bouncing right now. Don't mean I ain't been through nothing. Do I have any real people? Come on, take that Holy Ghost halo from hovering over your head and be real with your brother up in here. Amen. We all family. Just wave your hand and say, I've been through something. As a matter of fact, that's what the songwriter said. They said, I've been through too much. Help me, Vashon, not to praise him. That's the problem. Some of you all have not calculated the cost. And that's why you sit there as if you are doing God a service by being here. But if it had not been for the Lord God on my side. Whew, tell somebody if it hadn't been for God. If, if, it, if it had not been for God. And before we leave here today, we're going to praise God for the cost. We're going to praise God for the prices that have been paid for us to exist in these celebratory moments. The sacrifices, the things that we've been through, the stripping seasons of our life. Just because you see me ringed and robed and dressed today doesn't mean that I haven't been through my seasons of stripping. See, that's why some of you will never qualify because God can't trust you with trouble. Some of you are too mentally weak to be great. Some of you are too worried about protecting your mental health. Oh, and I'm all with that. I promise you, I am with us being mentally healthy, but you also shouldn't be that mentally fragile either. You got to be tough to be great. Amen. Just tell your neighbor, you got to be tough to be great. Some of you weak, sissy, pansy saints, y'all scare me. Amen. You can't take nothing soon as somebody talk about you. You're on to the next thing. As soon as something ain't going your way, you're bouncing and you're dipping. But in order to get what God has for you, you've got to be able to endure. For I reckon that the suffering of this present age is not worthy to be compared to the glory that should be revealed in me. Before you get some glory, you got to have a story. Is there anybody in here that the reason that there's glory emanating from you is because something pushed it out of you? Amen. There is a philosophical question and it beckons for us to invite ourselves into the inquiry about whether or not it is the wine press that is evil. Now, to the grape, the wine press is extremely evil. To the grape, it is the crushing and the pressing. But to the one that gets to sip the elixir and smell the aroma of what is produced from the crushing, to that one who is able to suck it in and enjoy the fragrance and the bouquet. Now I know y'all save here. Y'all don't drink wine, but for those of us who are saved enough to have a little sip and not lose our salvation, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't let me go into my prophetic and call you out up in here. Amen. Any of y'all ever enjoyed the experience of sipping the elixir, but the grape had to pay the price in order for you to enjoy the experience. So to the grape and to the olive, the olive crush is evil, but to the one that gets to enjoy it, amen, they are grateful for the sacrifice and the crushing. If you have sipped from the life of Pastor Andy Thompson, I need you to just give God a praise because it took his crushing in 
order for you to have the enjoyment of the experience that you no, you need to do just a little bit better than that. I need somebody to thank God for a man that was willing to pay the price for you to have the relationship. Come on, can we just do just a little bit better than that? Can you click your heels and get glad and clap your hands and send up a sound of praise in this place that says, I thank God that there's a man that was willing to pay the price. If you only knew the crushing, if you only knew the stripping, if you only knew the places that were evil to him so that you could sip the elixir of his life. And we have the unmitigated gall and audacity to stand in moments like this and say, what do he need all that for? It's for the prices that he paid. It's for the pits that he survived. It's the strippings that he endured. It's the things that he had to go through on the process to produce something that he could pour on your life. And you sit and say, man, I wonder, am I going this week? If we understood the cost, if we understood the prices paid, if we understood the stripping seasons of his life because it's in the pit that Joseph has to be divorced from the colorful coat that his father dressed him with because sometimes we must discover that yesterday's coat will not work for tomorrow's assignment. So it's only the pits that we're placed in that removes the limitations of other people's logic from our lives. Sometimes Sometimes our fathers can see things that are seasonal for us and sometimes God has to use the betrayal of brothers to put us in pits and in places to remove the limitations of other people's logic if you only understood the story some of y'all get the celebration but you don't know the story and many of us in this room tonight today we have discovered that betrayal is really a blessing Oh, let me say that again. To those of you who have experienced betrayal, I really want you to know that the betrayal of brothers is really a blessing because if you did not share your story with them, they could not have put you on the pathway to what God promised you. I know when people preach the life of Joseph, they tell you that you should never tell people your story. But if I don't tell you my dream, then you can't betray me and you can't put me in a place to take things off of me that would have limited me to the season that I was in. So praise God, I told you what God showed me so you could put me on the path to what God promised me. Yet I tell you that the dream is indestructible because the manufacturer will not recall what he is requiring of you. So there's no principality or power, no demon or devil that can stand against the dream that God has placed inside of your belly you need to just brag to somebody right now what God is about to do in your life because when you put God on display God says whether you got to endure a pit Potiphar's house or the palace you still gonna see every promise that I put on your life in spite of the betrayal God still gonna bless you and we stand in a moment like this because the man of God has been betrayed but they couldn't stop the blessing and for the 50 of y'all that can give God a praise for the places that he endured God says that the betrayal will not stop the blessing I thought that more people would give God a praise than that but I need some radical people that believe that the dream is still in effect to just high five your neighbor and tell them God still gonna do it no matter how they try to stop it you can't stop what God has started and you need to get a righteous indignation and get a praise partner on your roll and shout God still gonna do it God gonna do it in spite of the places that they did what they desired to do sometimes they just simply made God have to bless you even more as a matter of fact can you just prophesy to your neighbor and tell him for every place that you've been injured God is about to take you higher for every place that they tried to take you back 
God is about to launch you forward. Can I talk to some real people up in this place? Somebody shout, God is about to do even more. For every place that they walked out and left you for dead, God said they did not leave you to die, but they left you to live. And I need 50 people to lift up your voice in this house and give God a praise because the best is yet to come. You need to agree with about three people around you and tell them, baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. So praise God for for places that we've been betrayed. Praise God for the places that we entrusted people with our treasure. Praise God. Please be seated for the places that we wanted to give ourselves to others so that they could understand that we weren't trying to be better than them. We were just trying to be better for them. And there are people that always live on a lesser level that believe that your better is intimidating to them but if you got greatness in you my greatness should not intimidate you my greatness should inspire you is there anybody in here that's inspired by greatness that's the reason that you show up in world overcomers every week is because you are inspired by greatness as a matter of fact just nudge your neighbor and tell him I'm inspired by you oh give me a little bit in the house I feel preaching up in Come on, just nudge somebody and tell them I'm inspired by you. When I sat next to you, I felt that God was doing something on this row because I'm looking at some people that have had similar experiences, but you stand as a sign and a signal in the earth that if God can bring you through this, God can bring me through this. And so I'm going to help you praise God because I am a witness that God can help you survive stripping seasons and you you gonna come out better than you went in. Can I get some praises up in this place? Oh no, I need you to praise God for your neighbor because I come to prophetically point out to you that you coming out better than you went in. As a matter of fact, God will give you evidence by the people that you're connected to that what I'm going through is not where I'm going to die in. But look at somebody and tell them I can praise God because I just got a glimpse of my future when I sit down next to you when I see how wonderful you look after all the hell you've been through it lets me know that God is moving in this vicinity and I need somebody to give God a praise like there's a blessing on your row no I need you to bother somebody and say oh magnify the Lord with me let us exalt his name I need you to finish the verse. Let us exalt his name together. Look at somebody and tell them together. Please be seated in the presence of God. So, so there are seasons of sacrifice and that's why some of you will never be great because you're not willing to pay the cost. You're not willing to go through the difficult places. You, you, you would quit at the first sign of confusion and conflict, but you must factor in conflict to greatness. And if anything is going, or if anyone is going to be great and we talk about it and we shout about a Kairos moment and we say, oh, it's Kairos. Kairos, and it's when heaven kisses earth, but you must understand what Kairos is. Kairos is when when all hell breaks loose in your life. You must understand that there must be a shaking before there is a shifting. There must be a sifting before there is a shifting. I wondered why would Jesus tell Peter, Peter, I prayed for you. That just don't make sense to me, Jesus. You are God incarnate in the flesh. Why would you pray for him when you could just stop the thing that you're praying for him about? It would seem to me that you would just simply defeat the devil in his life and stop the sifting. But he says, Peter, I prayed for you. Don't pray for me, God. Step in and do something. Have you ever felt like that? God, I don't need prayers right now. I need a proactive position from you and I need you to stop the thing that's happening to me but he said Ronnie you don't understand I cannot stop the sifting because if I stop the sifting I will keep him from shifting in order for me to take him to the next level I've 
got to let some things be stripped off of him before he gets there. Before you can ever have kairos, there must be chaos. Kairos in the word picture is like shaking a soda up and letting it spew all over the place. But it is a sovereign, ubiquitous God that grabs every drop of the soda from the air, puts it back in the bottle, and puts the top back on it again. Some of you don't understand that this season may seem chaotic, but it's going to be a supernatural God that takes every drop out the air and puts it back together again. Look at somebody and tell them, you've been sovereignly set up. You've been set up to see that if God be for me, who in the world can be against me? You need to think about a boss right there and give God a praise because the only thing that they can do is cause your advancement and your promotion. If I simply endure, if I suffer for a little while, he will strengthen me and establish me and he will make me to stand. Somebody ought to give God a praise right there because this will result in something epic. This will result in something amazing. As a matter of fact, can I tell you that when this is over, you're going to be glad that you went through the sifting. You're going to be glad that you endured the chaos. You are going to be grateful that God brought you through what he brought you through because he can always birth in you a Manessa. He can give you spiritual amnesia to where you forget it was so bad because he's made things so good. And for that woman of God that's dancing and shouting over there, somebody needs to stand and give God a praise because I came in this place to tell you that you are about to give birth to your Manessa. God is about to make it so good that you forget everything that you've been through. Tell your neighbor the next season of your life is worth shouting about right now. I thought somebody would catch that. Tell somebody the next season of my life is worth shouting about right now. You 55, Pastor, but the next season will be greater than the latter season. Somebody that can join your faith with mine. You ought to lift up a praise in this house. High five somebody around you and tell them better is in the room. Baby, you ain't seen your best yet, but I dare you to prophesy to somebody and tell them better is on the way. No, y'all still ain't talking. I said run to somebody and tell them better is on the way. For every night you cried, better is on the way. For every day you felt betrayed, better is on the way. Somebody ought to give God a praise because you ain't seen nothing yet. Can I preach it like I feel it today? Grab that neighbor's hand. Shake it like you got the Holy Ghost. No, I I said shake that hand like you got God and rock that neighbor and say neighbor you coming up out of that rut today the enemy tried to make you feel like you had experienced the best that God has but after you've been shaken after you've been broken after you've been left for dead God says you are now at your best somebody ought to give God a praise up in this house and shout better is on the way Tell somebody better is on the way. On your way down, shout at somebody and tell them better is on the way. As a matter of fact, I wish I could get somebody on this road to help me magnify the Lord. Because what I went through, it could not kill me. It tried to kill me. It tried to stop me. But after all I've been through, I still got a praise. Where are the people that's been through something? Where are the people? that have been shaken where are the people that have been left for dead but you're still standing by the grace of God look at your neighbor and say neighbor I'm evidence that God will fight for you look at your neighbor and tell them neighbor I'm evidence that what the enemy meant for evil God done messed around and turned it around and worked it for my good I wish I had some runners 
in world overcomers. Look at somebody and tell them it's turning, it's turning. No, talk to five people and tell them it's turning. Get out of them seats and tell somebody it's turning. I feel a turn in this house. I feel God getting ready to stretch out. I feel somebody getting ready to break out. Look at somebody and tell them it's my breakout season. I will break out before I have a breakdown. Look at somebody and tell them I prophesy to you. You will not break down before you have your breakthrough. Y'all still ain't talking. Talk to somebody and tell them you will not break down before you give birth to your Manessa. Somebody give God a praise. Touch your neighbor and tell them push. Come on, clap those hands. Every time you clap, you push it. Every time you leap, you push it. Every time you dance, you push it. Look at somebody and tell them, I have not lost my mind. I'm trying to get the mind of Christ. Look at your neighbor and tell them, push. Get one more praise out. Get one more shout out. You can't die right here. You got to live to see. You've been through too much to die here. You fought too many people for the die here. You better square your shoulders. Look the devil in the face and say greater is he. Give me just a little bit in the house. Grab that neighbor's hand and say I don't know about you but I came to give birth today. I came to give birth today. I came to give birth today. I'm looking at the people who are pregnant. I'm looking for the people that are carrying something. I'm looking for the people that have been through something somebody ought to grab your neighbor's hand and tell them I paid the price for this and I've given the cost for this and I got to give God a praise because when I look back over my life after all I've been through many people have tried to imitate it but what they don't understand it cost me something run to three people and tell them it cost me something no, y'all still ain't moving. I know it's crowded. But run to somebody and tell them this praise costs me something. I feel like I'm at the river. I feel like preaching. Tell somebody this costs me something. When you see me leaping, it's because people left me. When you see me dancing, it's because I've been developed in hell. When you see me running, it's not that I'm running from my enemies. It's because I'm running into the arms of God. Somebody ought to give God a praise. Look at somebody and tell them, welcome to your Vanessa season. God is about to make you forget how bad it really was. God is about to make it so good. You're about to get a husband that make you forget the last broke run over shoe joker that walked out and left you for dead. Look at somebody and tell them, better Y'all ain't talking, I need you to help me preach. Uh, Look up and down your row and say better. Run to somebody and high five them and say better. Run to somebody else and tell them better. I speak it over your life, your best days. Look at somebody and tell them you about to see money that you ain't never seen. You about to drive whips that you ain't never drove. You about to live in houses that you ain't even have to build. Somebody shout better. I feel like I don't preach myself happy. Somebody shout better. I thought y'all came to celebrate. Run to somebody else and tell them better, better, better. You can't get better when you're bitter. You got to throw that bitterness off of you. Look at somebody and tell them today is the day that I divorce myself from being bitter. I may have to face some brothers that betrayed me. I may have to go back, but I'm going to go back and show them what you meant for evil. As a matter of fact, you ought to put it on your Facebook. You ought to hashtag some Nick Rose in it and tell them what you meant for evil. If it wasn't for their evil, you wouldn't be in line for elevation. But you ought to praise God for evil. Evil will elevate you. 
evil will advance you. Evil will take you to new levels. That's only for the real people. You ought to give God praise because in the tree is good and but you only get good when you go through evil. Somebody ought to say, thank God for the evil people. Thank God for the people that God raised me up in their face. This is the last thing that I want you to tell your neighbor. Just grab your neighbor's hand. Look them eyeball to eyeball and tell them, God, no, y'all got to put your preaching voice on for this one. You can't put your teaching voice on. You ought to look them in the face and tell them, God sent me to tell you that everything that tried to stop you, everything that tried to limit you, everything that tried to block you, that's the reason God is about to bless you. He's about to bless you for waking up. He's about to bless you for pushing in. He's about to bless you for still praising. He's about to bless you for not waving the white flag. He's about to bless you for squaring your shoulders. He's about to bless you for surviving. Somebody ought to give God a praise and say, thank God I survived. Come on, clap those hands if you believe it. Come on, do better than that. Clap those hands if you believe it. So now, let's do what we came to do. Woo. 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 <laughs> Somebody's still giving birth in this room. I was getting ready to quit, but somebody's still pushing. <laughs> Can we do just that? Can you grab somebody standing next to you by both of their hands? Uh, I don't know the cost. I don't know what you're enduring. I don't know what it's taken from you for God to get something to you. I'd never sit across from this man of God in envy. I sit across from him and I pray for him because I don't know what it cost for him to birth this. Perhaps you're connected to someone's hand who's in their stripping season. Perhaps you're holding the hand of someone who's in a pit right now. Perhaps you're holding the hand of someone who is in their Potiphar house season where the garment of the slave has to be removed from you. Believing that this is good enough I'm managing Potiphar's house. Maybe this is what God showed me. Maybe this is the dream. I do have more than I've ever had before in my life. Maybe this is it. God has to now allow the betrayal of a sister so that he can be stripped of the garment of the slave. So that he doesn't mismanage the moment and believe that good enough is God enough? Perhaps you're holding the hand of someone who is in their good enough season. They really believe that that could possibly be the dream, but it doesn't measure up to what God showed them. Maybe you're holding the hand of someone who's in their prison, the place where they're isolated and lonely, the place where they feel forgotten, and forsaken the place that they feel like maybe it's not going to happen maybe I prayed all those prayers that maybe it's just not true maybe it's just not going to be so but I want you to pray for that hand audibly and openly as the musicians play for us I want you to pray strong for that hand that you're holding 
I want you to let your voice be heard in this moment because they need to hear that there's somebody that's willing to go into their birthing room with them. And I'm willing to pray you through. Pray. Pray for that hand. Pray for that life. Pray out of your spirit. Come on, pray. Pray that they can endure. Peter, I prayed for you. I pray that you can endure this season. But I promise you that the season that I'm praying over in your life is going to yield a far greater reward than the pain that you're feeling right now. So I pray you can hold on until your day of celebration comes. I pray that you can hold on to your 55th birthday when people gather and assemble from around the world to celebrate you. I pray that you can endure. Come on, pray for them, pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. Uh, and after we pray, we're going to do what we came to do. And that's honor up. Come on, pray out of your spirit. Seasons of my life, if I just knew that somebody could hold my hand and pray for me. Days that I almost quit. Days that I almost gave up. Days that I just wanted to give in. Because I didn't know that God had a Manessa for me. I didn't know that there was an Ephraim in my future. Because sometimes the pit seems so evil and part of his house seems so evil and the prison seemed so evil. Some days my past overwhelmed me, but God had a future reality for me. Live! Ooh. I say live. Live until you see it. Live until you become it. Live until you walk in it. Live until you're bouncing it on your knee. Live. Squeeze that hand and tell them live. Shout at them and tell them live. I wake you up and I remind you that everything he showed you is yea and amen. Now just hold them in your arms and just hug them and tell them it's yea and amen. And I agree with you for the best is yet to come. Now clap your hands and celebrate. Come on, clap those hands and celebrate what God is about to do. I'm done. Come on, there's another celebration in the room. Come on, there's another wave of glory in the room. Come on, I need you to clap one more time like you feel that this thing is about to hit your house. Listen. This is what I came to do. I did not come to preach to you today. Again, I've been preaching every day this week. So I'm not here to preach another sermon. You don't need preaching in this house for certain but I came to honor up. I came for one purpose and one purpose only. And that is to sow into the wind. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for providing an example for me. Thank you for giving me hope in hopeless seasons of my life. When I came to the River Church, I walked out to 30 people. I knew what it was like to stand preaching and people would walk in and they would go to the ushers and they would say, so Cheryl Brady isn't here anymore. And when they discovered that she wasn't, they would walk out and they would leave. Six months in, church was in foreclosure. We were 
worshiping at a Unitarian church with rainbow flags all around us. I was blackballed across the country because people felt like I picked the white people. They wouldn't let me preach. I went from preaching three to five times a week to zero. Went from a brand new 8,000 square foot home to huddling in a room with my family with a space eater. There were days that I just wanted to go somewhere and die. And now after we've finished our multi-million dollar project, people want to celebrate it. But where were you in my suffering season? The whip is tight again. When I pulled up, security said we was looking for the other car. I said, yeah, when they catch up, we switch up, so yeah. But your pastor walked with me through difficult seasons. He sat with me through seasons of suffering, days that he didn't know that I was suicidal. And if he hadn't taken out time from the countless number of people that he pastors to spend time with this little preacher from Detroit, I would not have survived my season. So I'm forever indebted to you. I will forever honor you. I will forever be here to support you. I have a deep and profound appreciation and love for you. My church is thriving because you didn't think it robbery to sit with me. And I am forever grateful to you. What I would normally do in moments like this, because I believe it's so important for pastors not just to get seat, but also support. I'm quite sure he doesn't need money. But people miss that we too need support. And there are days people look at my whip and they look at my house and they look at my travel and they don't think that I need support. And so sometimes it's the hooks and it's the thank yous and it's the we needed you that helps me make it. Your church is too big for this. I would normally have you and the woman of God stand right here. And I have stood with pastors for two, three hours just for their congregation to come and say thank you. Pastoring is such a thankless job. People just take and they feel like you're supposed to. And Jesus takes note. He says, we're not there, 10. And only one turn to say thank you. If only one, the ratio is one in 10 for Jesus, what do you think it is for us? But here's what I want you to do for me today. I want this man and woman of God to see a traffic jam of thank you. I want you to sacrifice just a little brunch today and a little time just to marinate in this moment and just tell him thank you. Thank him with your seed but thank him from your heart. I was telling my wife the other day, I got everything but a friend. Who do I hang out with? Who do I go to the movies with? I have not been to a sporting event since I left Detroit because who do I go with? And people just take 
And they just take. And they just take. I had to raise $2 million and I raised it. And people still kept taking. Kept taking. Kept taking. Had to get us in an $8 million building and people just kept calling. My rent ain't paid. This ain't, this ain't paid. I can't do this. I can't do that. And I'm like, do you know the weight I'm under? And you just keep taking. And then people have the audacity to say what I don't deserve. There are people that would not be able to live if me and my wife didn't give everything we have to serve them. Stop measuring us by the crowd. All you see is multiplied responsibility. When I came here, I was managing a debt load of about $20,000 a month. Now I manage a debt load of $180,000 a month. And that's nothing in comparison to what your pastor has to have the mind to manage. And so let's just take a minute and say thank you. The time that he spent with your marriage was time away from his own. The time he spent preparing for a word for your family was time away from his own. The days that you so casually received the word that cost him so much. The days that you walked down like, I don't know if pastor was really on today. what it cost him to give you that word so here's what I want to do I want a traffic jam so whenever there are moments of loneliness whenever there are moments that he's feeling the coldness and the nakedness of the pit whenever there are moments that he's feeling the blade of betrayal in his back I want him to be able to remember back on his 55th birthday that we stood in great numbers to honor him. There will be lonely days again. I'd love to tell you that there wouldn't be, but God is just going to continue to multiply and do even more. And when you walk into your new campus, there will only be more responsibility. I know y'all are clock church, but we're coming off the clock today. I'm the bishop. I'm in the building. Today we're going to honor my brother. And so I know what they've asked. You know what they've asked of you. I want you to do more. I'm going to begin with just a meager seed, a thousand dollar seed. Um, but some of you can do so much more. I hate my birthday because they put a number that I don't really believe reflects my sacrifice and my investment. And I'm grateful for what they give me, but I've done so much more than double my age. So I want you to think about what he means to you. And you can never pay for that. But I want you to get as close as you can. And I want you to honor up. I want you to match the wind today. And I want you to honor and respect the authority on this mighty man of God. I want you to get that seed in your hand. And I don't want you to give from your seat today. Again, I want him to see a traffic jam of people just coming to say thank you. So however they lead you, I want you to empty your seat. I want you to inconvenience yourself. 
and I want you to come and I want him and first lady to see that man we love you yeah we love you I'm out man I love you please don't ever stop being there for me I can't navigate this next season of my life without you I don't even know how You've been where I'm trying to go. I honor up because we'll never be on the same level. You are a general in this city and you're a general in my life. And I can't make this next leg without you. So hang around. Be there. I love you. God bless you, world overcomers. Amen. We love you guys. They'll direct you. Come on, Pastor. gifts come just come just start coming bring in your love gift bring your card bring your money those of you who are giving by phone it's all right just come bishop has asked us to walk that's right come on come on come on let our pastor see we love you pastor andy we really do we really do come on let them see you let them see you give let them see you that's right come on come on pastor you are loved you are appreciated Thank you for every sacrifice that you've made. Thank you. That's right. Y'all come on. Y'all come on. I love it. 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 Yes. That's right. Let them know. And, Ed, and as you're leaving, make sure you grab a picture with Pastor in the lobby. We have cupcakes for you. We have food trucks outside. We just want to tell Pastor we love him. That's right. That's right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for showing your love. Thank you for showing your love. Thank you for showing your love. Now listen, y'all. He going to be in the lobby. Y'all bring us the money and take pictures with him in the lobby. Y'all come on. Bring us the money and take a picture with Pastor in the lobby. Yep, y'all come on. Y'all y'all come on. I know you want to. Pastor love you. He gonna, he gonna take a picture with you, I promise. Just not right this moment. Y'all bring us the money. Those of you who are watching online, Pastor's Q, um, his cash app is there. Let's bless him so good. Let's bless him so good today. Let's bless him so good today. That's right, right in there. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. That's right. That's right, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Yes, Pastor. Yes. Y'all, come on. Let's thank God our pastor's coming to greet us real quick. Come on, let's give it up for our pastor. Before, before you just run out the door, did anybody hear a word in here this morning? Can I just say one thing? To God be the glory for the great things he has done. And... I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for my family. Thank you so much. And I am going to go in there if you'd like to. We're going to have a party now. I'm going to be in there. You can take a picture with me if you want. Um, if there be any praise, let it go to Calvary. Amen. And um, so thank you so much. And from the bottom of my heart, if you're a first-time visitor, this is not how church normally goes, but this is what we did today. Amen. I'm sure you heard a word because God will break the yoke off of your life. Amen. And, uh, and so I'm so honored. And from just the worship, the music, that whole thing just messed me up. I was messed up. When y'all when y'all start, when y'all sing John P. Key, that was it for me. And, uh, but thank you all so much for coming, for everyone that's watching live around the world. Thank you. And if you'd like to give something to me, it's the cash apps there. The stuff is there. If not, that's okay. Because God is God. God is God. Is God. Beside him, there is another. Amen. Can I just pray for everybody before everybody just leaves? I know folk already going in the lobby. I'm about to go there. I got, I'm going to go to the bathroom, and then I'm going to come out there and just, and I'll, if you can shake my hand if you like, you, I'll take a picture with you if you like, but let's just pray. God, thank you. Thank you for Bishop God be. Thank you for him being here and, and sharing a word with us. Thank you that 
you've been there and we know that you care. If we had 10,000 tongues, it would not be enough to say thank you. Thank you for sparing us. Thank you for the challenge. Thank you for the betrayals. Thank you, Lord God, for the slavery. Thank you for the pit. Thank you for that prison. And thank you for the palace. I pray palace over everybody under the sound of my voice. From the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. For everyone that decides to give anything to me. God, you said that if we gave a prophet a cup of cold water, that we would not fail to receive that prophet's reward. So I pray that, that the reward will be on everyone. May the anointing on me flow down to the hem of the robe. And God, for anyone who decides to bless me today, God, I pray that you bless them 30, 60, 100 fold. It's more than they could ever ask or think. And, uh, and that, God, you will use us for your glory. Dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Cover us with your blood. Be God in our situation. And God, bless your people. Make your face shine upon your people. Be gracious to your people. Give them peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. We all sit together. Thank you so much for coming to honor me today. Thank you so much.